What's up, everybody? In today's second episode of the 30-team series for previewing all 30 NBA teams, I'm going to be talking about the Chicago Bulls. So, obviously, the Chicago Bulls were a rebuilding team and organization who hired a new president, in Arturis Karnasovis. I don't know if I pronounced that right. He's not American. And a new GM of Mark Eversley. So, they're obviously a resetting their culture and who knows if they're going to fire Jim Boylan. I mean, I think they shouldn't hire, try to hire Kenny Atkinson because he's a great rebuilding coach and he resets cultures like what he did in Brooklyn. I mean, that roster in 2016, I would say is far for the Nets, their roster they had in 2016 when Kenny Atkinson took over, it was far less talented than the 2020 Chicago Bulls. I mean, I wouldn't say people expected the Bulls to go far in the playoffs or anything, but people had high high-ish expectations. I knew I know Bulls fans who thought they're going to get the eight seed, or Bulls fans who thought they're going to win forty games. I know Ken, Kenny, King of the Fourth Quarter, he had high expectations that were ruined by the season, and he blames Jim Boylan and he blames injuries. But the Bulls just didn't live up to their potential. I mean, I wouldn't say they were supposed to be a great team, but they're supposed to do better than what they actually did this year. So, going into their actual roster at the point guard position, they have a. Uh, Kobe White, who came off the bench as their sixth man, and Thomas Sadoransky, who was starting. I mean, Sadoransky had an okay season. I would compare him to, like, a little worse version of Ricky Rubio this year. Rubio did a little better on the Suns. Uh, Sadoransky averaged, like, 10 points a game of, what, four assists and, or five assists, and he's, like, fine. I mean, he's a fine point guard. He's not, like, a rebuilding piece for the future. I mean, he's kind of, like, He's going to be like this his whole career. He's going to be like a 12-5 and five or a 10-6 kind of guy where he could come off your good backup point guard and if you if okay at best starting point guard. And he didn't his stats didn't really equate to win, so he, he'll probably stay around for two more years, but once they actually are trying to contend, he could move to the backup position or he'll be not be re-signed or be traded away. So the, their sixth man, Kobe White, was great off the bench because he took the load off Zach Levine. Zach Levine was their whole offense, pretty much, besides Kobe White. I mean, Roy Markkinen, you could argue with some of their offense, but he was hurt a lot of the year, and when he was, he wasn't really performing well. Like his first two years in the NBA, he kind of regressed, which was surprising. That's why the Bulls were some, like uh, projected to do better because Roy Markkinen was supposed to be a borderline all-star this year. He only averaged like what, 14 points a game off terrible efficiency. So that really hurt the team. Well, injuries were, injuries is a common theme among this Bolts team. I mean, Colby White was hurt. Um, I'm pretty sure Thomas Sanoransky was hurt at some point. Laurie Markkinen, Wendell Carter, Daniel Gafford was hurt. Otto Porter's always hurt. So um, there's a lot of injuries there. Even Ryan Archidiakono was hurt. And Ch Chandler Hutchinson got hurt. So even their lesser known players got hurt too. So, Kobe White had a great second half of the season. He really turned it up to another level, getting out of, like, a rookie slump at the beginning of the year or just getting a, adjusted to the league, where he didn't shoot a great percentage from the field just because he struggled early on. He only shot 39% from the field, but that's not really fair to him. The last, like, 20 games, he was probably shooting, like, 50% from the field. He was, like, having, like, 30-point games. He would go 12 or 18 for the field or... 14 and 20 from the field and he was just having a great second half of the season and I could see him as a player who in the next two to three years could average like 20 and four he doesn't really distribute the ball very well which you want from a true point guard who he is smaller so you want a small point guard to be able to pass he's more of attacking he only averaged what um three assists so I mean he is a rookie and he came off the bench so I guess it's harder to get assists when you're coming off the bench but he needs to improve in that category and maybe the defensive category, but he is little, so he can't really do much about that. Um, he was a great player. I mean, I could see him averaging like 20 and four, being like a Colin Sexton type player like he was this year. I mean, Colin Sexton averaged 20 points per game this year. No one really knew about it because he was on a terrible team and they weren't winning and no one cares about Cleveland now that LeBron's gone. But they still have won 20 games. Um, moving into the shooting guard position, so this is obviously their best position as Zach Levine played the two. And they had Denzel Lyon, Valentine playing some minutes off the bench or Thomas Sadoransky moving to two. They didn't really have a lot of great pieces at shooting guard besides uh, Zach Levine, like off the bench. Uh, 
Levine had a great year. I mean, he averaged 26 points per game pretty much um, on pretty good efficiency, 45% from the field. I mean, that game against the Cavs early in the year when he dropped like 50 on like four, 14 threes or whatever, or well, dropped like 56 on 14 threes, something like that. And um, he was just had some of these nights where you're like, wow, he could be, that's like one of the best players in the league. I mean, he's obviously not because if he's one of the top players in the league, he'd be winning games, but he's still putting up really good numbers. I mean, he could be involved in a trade where since his value is up, they can get really good picks or they could get a decent player from him. But I don't know what the Bulls are trying to do. Maybe they are trying to build up around Levine. They did give him a massive extension. Um, I had him on my fantasy team this year. He's great. I mean, he was like the third ranked shooting guard. Um, obviously, he's not actually the third best shooting guard in the league, but numbers-wise, you could argue that he was because he's putting up phenomenal numbers, phenomenal numbers, because, I mean, he's on a bad team where guys are hurt, so he has to put up these numbers to stay in games. Next year, I'll see him averaging, like, the same amount, maybe a little less if they get someone in free agency and if their team's healthy. But I don't... He's not a first option on a, like on a winning team. He's a good second option, a great third option. He's kind of, he's like a worse version of Bradley Beal. They play similarly. They're both aggressive and don't need the ball in their hands to score. But they're not a superstar player that could be the best player on a championship winning team. So they're going to need to get some pieces if they want to actually contend. I mean, they're far, far away from contending for a championship. I mean, really far. They don't have the coach. They don't have the assets. I mean, they're going to have a top 10 pick this year, so if they get lucky and um, get the number one pick and the number one, they get lucky in the lottery, maybe they could get, I don't know who they draft, what position they, would they want. Um, they'd probably take a small four. Maybe they'd take LaMelo and he could play some three or Levine could play some three. Or they'd take, uh, yeah, but they definitely need more pieces. So at small forward, one healthy auto porter started. And he was fine. I mean, he's Otto Porter. Uh, the Nets were actually going to sign him back a while ago. Uh, but the Wizards matched their deal. That, that's why he has this huge contract. It's, he's getting horribly overpaid. He's, like, fine. He's a, He plays defense. He can knock down the three. But he was better a while. He was, in, like, 2016 had a good year. But he hasn't really improved. He's been hurt. He'll give you, like, 10 points a game. He wasn't really healthy this year, so you can't really have a fair assessment on him. But he's uh, they need to get rid of his contract somehow. Um, him in a first-round pick to another to another rebuilding team. Or they just hold on to it because they don't think they're going to contend. Um, but he would be a good player on a team if he's on a three-year, like, $15 million contract. But he's on this huge contract that's holding the Bulls back from trying to uh, sign players in free agency. I know there's not very many free agents this year, like I said yesterday, but um, he's not really providing anything. He only averaged uh, eight points a game, or no, he averaged uh, 11 points a game, but he wasn't very healthy. Um, so in these 12 points per game or 11 points per game, he shot 44% from the field, which is not great for your small forward, who is supposed to be a 3 and three and D guy. I mean, he's supposed to knock down the 3 and play defense, so he's supposed to have a high field goal percentage, but I that wasn't the case this year, so it didn't really, uh, he didn't really play well this year. But that I guess that's not fair, because he wasn't healthy. He was hurt for the majority of the season. He got hurt, like, right away, and he only played, like, 20 games, probably less. Uh, he only played 14 games this year, so... That's not a fair thing to say that he underperformed because he didn't really play, but he was a disappointment because he got hurt, and when he played, he didn't play well. So they also had Shaquille Harrison, who was, like, fine. Chandler Hutchinson was fine. They're, like, they, all their backup positions are, like, they wouldn't make any other NBA rosters, or they'd be a bench warmer, and they'd just be a reserve. Um, like, Shaquille Harrison, he's, like, he's athletic. Um... That's, that's really it. He can't shoot really well. He can't, I mean, he could play some defense, but he wouldn't get minutes on a, any other team besides the Bulls or maybe the Knicks or teams like that. So moving on to the power forward position. Their power forward position, looking at like the names, it was supposed to be good this year. I mean, Laurie Markin and Thaddeus Young. 
Um, as I kind of touched on earlier, Laurie Markman was supposed to be good this year. I mean, his rookie year, he averaged like 18 points per game. And then this year, he only averaged, what, 13 points? So it's just a big disappointment for him that he wasn't able to stay healthy this year. Again, that's a theme. But when he did play, he did play some games. Um, he played 50 games this year, and he only averaged 15 points. So, I mean, he was hurt for a bit, but he's still healthy for some of the games. And the fact that he only averaged 15 points on 42% from the field, like, that's not good for your power forward. Like, if Zach Levine's shooting 45% from the field, then he's taking their most shots, and he's your shooting guard, your power forward should not be shooting 42% from the field. I mean, he's taking a ton of shots. That's like him going 7 of 18 each game. Like, that's not good. You don't want your power forward doing that. I, I guess he's different because he spaces the four. But still, he's your big. Him and Wendell Carter are your two bigs. Although Wendell Carter, again, was hurt for a lot of the year, too. But um, he, was supposed to, he was supposed to be improving after a year, every year. I mean, he's supposed to be this three-point three shooter. He only shot 34% from the three. I mean, that's decent for a big who can't shoot. But he's supposed to be able to shoot. So 34% is not good at all. And... Maybe he just something was wrong with him this year and he'll improve next year, but it's a little bit concerning that Laurie Martin hasn't shown any progression since his rookie year, and he's kind of going more down than up, like a Tyreek Evans kind of guy who averaged 20 points per game his rookie year and won rookie of the year and then just fell off a cliff. And you definitely don't want that for <coughs> Laurie Martin. So, Thaddeus Song's a good veteran. He would be a good backup on a contending team. So he was a good backup this year. He played some quality minutes. He averaged like 12 points a game, I think, or uh, uh, 10 points per game. So he was fine. He's Thaddeus Young. He used to be better. He's a little bit out of his prime. When he was on the Nets and Pacers, he averaged a little more. But what can you expect from him? He's not going to go in and change a game. So moving on to the center position, Wendell Carter... Only play, He only played 43 this games this year, and he was his second year. He averaged 10 point, uh, 11 points per game and uh, 10 rebounds, which is fine. Again, he's like someone like Jared Allen, but a little a little different player. He's bulkier and isn't as athletic um, jumping-wise and can't just dunk over people, but they're just inside players. They can't, they're not going to reach us. You can't expect Wendell Carter to be averaging 25 and 15 anywhere in the future just because... No centers are really doing that anymore. Like, especially ones that can't shoot. I mean, Andre Drummond, since he's gone the league, his numbers have only gone down. I mean, his rebounding numbers have improved, but his scoring numbers haven't improved just because he can't shoot. Um, it's a modern NBA now. You need to have people who stretch the floor. That's why Porzingis is going to be able to put up good numbers. He's seven foot one and he can stretch the floor and can dribble. Um, I'll see him as like a 15 and 12 kind of guy down the line, which is fine. Um, a good starting center down in the future right now, an average starting center, um, a great backup center if you, on a championship team. Um, they also had Daniel Gafford, who I really like a lot. He could, he could protect the rim. He, he got blocks every time he was in the game. Um, he had, he only averaged 1.5 blocks per game, but it felt like much more. I mean, he only played, uh, 21 games, but he was a rookie. He's a second round pick. And I really like his game. I mean, he, he's an athlete, and he's everywhere. And if he could develop his offensive game and polish, polish it, he'll be a good player, a great backup. Uh, Wendell Carter, Daniel Gafford mix would be, be a great mix. Um, and overall, this team, it's like uh, they have a lot of work to do. In the draft especially, if they hit on someone in the draft, if they draft a Lamella Ball or uh, anyone, if they draft R.J. Hampton, uh, he's not really projected high. If they draft a Cole Anthony, who dropped a bit in the projections, or a uh, Anthony Edwards somehow, they'll they could in two or three years they can be a contender. But they have a lot of lot of lot of things to do before they could put their name in with uh, names in the East. I mean, even the Nets, who are the seventh seed, now have KD coming back, and the Magic have more superstars than them, who are the eighth seed. The Pacers, the Celtics, the Sixers, the Raptors. I mean, I don't see them beating any of these teams or getting better than these teams unless they hit on one of these uh, draft picks. Because there isn't very many free agents that would sign with the Bulls 
or there isn't very many free agents in the first place. And getting a free agent to go to Chicago, they haven't won since Jordan. I mean, they had that stretch with D Rose, but he obviously wasn't able to stay healthy and the whole thing fell apart. But sadly, I mean, I want to see D Rose back in Chicago and win a ring. Um, so if they somehow rebuild their team and someone like Anthony Edwards come in, comes in and is an instant superstar and D Rose comes back in three years and wins a ring with them, that would be the best situation. But it's a little unrealistic considering they need to find a coach. Um, they need to find a backup shooting guard, a starting small forward. Who knows if Lori, like even their starters, besides Zach Levine, who isn't that good. I mean, he's a all-star caliber player, but he's not a superstar. We're like, Lori Markkinen's replace, replaceable. He just, he's averaging 14 points a game. I mean, if he's improving and next year he averages 20, that's not replaceable. But Wendell Carter's replaceable. Shaquille Harrison's replaceable. Colby White's replaceable. Everyone's just not that great on the Bulls roster right now. I mean, they're still young, but I'd give them two to three years. And if they're still not doing anything, then blow it all up and start the rebuild again. Um, but the Bulls don't have a bright future, but it's not looking like they can't improve. It's not like a team where you're like, oh, they're a bad team and they're only going to get worse, like the Knicks. You know the Knicks aren't getting better anytime soon. Um, so there is some promise for this roster, but um, they need a lot of improvements to be considered in the upper echelon of teams. That's pretty much everything um, that covers the Bulls. So overall, okay team, not a great record, underperformed, but with a new coaching staff and a new culture and some new picks and maybe a couple veterans added, they could be a eight seed type team next year, maybe replace the Magic as the eight seed. Thank you for watching. Drop a like, subscribe. Episode three dropping tomorrow on the Jazz, which should be fun. So. Thank you.